Y'all doing all right? Ooh, y'all look good. Hey, it's good to be in Christ, isn't it? Hallelujah. So when Pastor Marcia, I said to her, hey, you know, what is this about anyway? Like, what is the theme concerning this? Because I was uh, preparing my heart and I was already led in a particular direction and same Holy Ghost that lives in her lives in me. So I was already on the right track and I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. That's confirmation um, as she had spoken. So let's just thank God and hook up with me this morning. I'm going to stay within my time so that we can move along. But I, w- I really want you to hook up, not with just me, with everyone. How many of you are here to hear from God? Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're all here to uh, uh, equip and to uh, give you the necessary things by the grace of God. Amen. For you to fulfill the call of God in your life. And I'm here to tell you, you will not fulfill it if you don't know who you are in Christ. If you don't know who you are, what you have and what you can do in Christ Jesus, it changes everything. That's our Eden. That's our eating. I love that. I love that illustration that you gave. And I, both of you did a perfect job to set me up because it's the same spirit. Come on. That's working in us. I mean, and I thank God for that because it prepped It prepared me to get right into uh, the flow that he has for me in the assignment that he has for me. And I hope that it will continue along that way this morning. Amen. By the grace of God. Go to Philippians chapter 3 with me, verse 1. And I'm mostly going to be reading from the Amplified Classic uh, because I just love the Amplified, love the Passion 2, love New Living Translation, but Amplified Classic is one of my favorites uh, just because of how it um, interprets and breaks things down. So Holy Ghost, we hook up with you, Spirit of God. We thank you, Father, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith and you will speak through my lips. I'm asking Lord for and thanking you. I already asked you, but thank you for a wide door of utterance this morning, not just for myself, but every speaker here today, that as we open our mouths, we will open it according to your heart's desire and speak the words that you are saying uh, to your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And I know they say a women's conference, and I was like, man, how do I make this like women? And it's like, (laughs) you just speak to women. I don't know. I mean, (laughs) the Bible says uh, in Galatians that, you know, it's neither Greek nor Jew, Um, you know, it's neither male nor female, neither slave nor free, but what? In in Christ, in Christ. And if we don't understand this and get a picture of this, we can't go far. We won't make it. We won't go anywhere without this revelation that we are one with him. You know, God didn't see fit that it was enough for us to be in close proximity. No, he placed us in him. That right there will just blow your mind. And it's not about what you know. I mean, if you came here to see uh, your favorite speaker, and don't get me wrong, I don't care who, you know, if you got a favorite speaker, fine, great, because maybe they, they minister to you the most. You know, I'm not, my assignment is not to just get you happy and get you saying amen and shouting and woo, that was a good word, and do nothing with it. The point of this is that you might do What are you going to do with the word that you hear? If you're really receiving from the Lord God, if you came expecting to hear, if it's that important to you, are you even making record of what he's saying or are you just going to rely on your memory? When I was growing up, everybody had notebooks out. I'm seeing less and less. And I I tell the young people all the time, listen, you better pay attention. The Lord God himself, he's your father. He's speaking to you. If it's not important, don't worry about it. Don't write it down. Jesus said, take heed how you hear. How you hear from God. How you hear the word. And I'm not just talking about with somebody preaching. And it it doesn't move me one way or another if you're going to listen to me or not. But I'm telling you, how you approach the word... Is going to be how you receive anything from the Lord. It's going to determine how well you receive anything from the Lord. So get happy. Make a change. That's what I love about this life. We can just make a change. If we're going in the wrong direction, we just turn around. Like, oh, yeah, you're right. Make an adjustment. Right? Go ahead and pull out. Don't just everybody look straight ahead so nobody knows just you. You just pull out. All right. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, Amplified Classic. It says, for the rest, my brethren, delight yourselves in the Lord and continue to rejoice that you are in him. Continue to rejoice that you are in him. Listen, if you're not experiencing joy 
as a person that is in Christ Jesus, it's just because you haven't looked at who you are in him lately. You need to go back and look at this. Look at um, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, and I'm one of those people, I go through a lot of scriptures, but we'll just go with the direction of the Holy Ghost. In verse 8 in the New Living Translation, this is so important that the, uh, Paul the Apostle understands this. And after being in Christ for many years up to this point, um, he still said this. In the New Living Translation, starting in verse 8, it says, yes, everything else is worthless. Everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of what? Knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counted it all as garbage, so that I can gain Christ. And look at this, become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ Jesus for God's way of making us right with himself depends on what? Faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. I remember reading that and I was, I was like, yes, Paul, I want to know Christ too. I want to experience him too. And then it says, I want to suffer with him. I was like, oh, hold up. What you mean suffer? I was like, wait a minute, what you talking about? He said, sharing in his death. Do you know we have to put some things to death in this life? He was talking about sacrifices that's required. You know, it doesn't cost you anything for salvation, but if you're going to follow him, it will cost you. It's going to cost you some things. But the pay, the reward of obedience and walking in what he has prepared for you is way more, way greater, much more than the cost that, and the sacrifice that we think we're giving up. He says, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. He sounds like a determined man. He said, everything else is worthless. And I want I, that emphasis right there, man, I have certain words bolded on there. I, he says, wanna, he says I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. How many of you say, I want to experience that kind of mighty power? You believe that Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost. You understand it's the same spirit, not a lesser degree, but the same anointing, same Holy Ghost that raised him from the dead. He actually lives in us. It wasn't even enough to be with us, but he is in in us but I'm finding that too many believers are not experiencing this resurrection power oh we got saved we're going to heaven Woo! but how many of you know he didn't die just for us to go to heaven he wants us he died so that we could have eternal life and according to John 17, Jesus said eternal life is knowing him and his son, Jesus the Christ. So this knowing is not just knowing up here. This is experiencing. This is an interaction where you come to, when you come to know that he is the resurrection of life. Come on, dead things in your life, dead things even in your soul that seem impossible and hopeless. He is the one that can cause resurrection life to come out of that. Going through impossible situations is, and, and people say there's no coming back from that. Come on, he is the life. He is the resurrection. Paul had some understanding of this. He said, this is, the, this is what I say. I want to know him and experience him. I'm going to give you some practical keys right now. Practical steps to take away from what I'm saying here. And it's important that you grab a hold of this. Because like I said, if you're just here and you're listening and you say, whoa, that's good. 
And you anointed, Pastor Lene, you anointed. Let, let them use you. Like that means nothing if you don't use what you're getting. And this is for anybody that preaches in this conference. We are not here to compete against one another and say, well, you, he, he better than you and she better than. We're not here to impress except to impress upon you of, and, and equip you with what God has already provided for you. But all, if you just know that he provided for you, but you don't know exactly what it is, it will be of no benefit to you. I like the way Pastor Marcia said it. She said, the treasure's already in you. <laughs> you got to discover that treasure. You and I both, not just you, I do too. Number one, step number one. You got to get dressed up in Christ. Put on the new garments. Put on the, and I'm saying daily. Just like in the natural, you put on new garments daily. Why? Because the old ones get dirty, stinky, nasty. Right? He says, put it on. These are garments that he has placed uh, and given you because of your union with Christ Jesus. Somebody just blessed us. With some mangoes last week. Oh, praise the Lord. And I got more. <laughs> I got some extra ones. Now don't, if you know I love mangoes, please don't bring more. I don't need more sugar. <laughs> but it was so good. I really tried to resist it. The whole week I tried to resist. And then they told me there was one Julie mango. Ooh. And I took a bite. I felt like Eve. I failed. Once I took that bite, I was in. I literally said, I'm in love again. I literally said that to my husband. I wasn't talking to him. I was like, All over again, I'm in love. I mentioned this to you, but I, there's, there's something called the grafted mango. <laughs> and if you know, you know, but it's, uh, you can do it with any two different kinds species of plants. They call it the grafting process where they literally bind together two different plants. And it's an amazing process. You can look it up on YouTube. I thought about showing it, and I was like, no, that's going to waste my time. But <laughs> it's an amazing process because it, it's, it's, it's a binding together of two separate things. And as they come together, there's something just amazing that happens. Over time, it becomes so intertwined and becoming one. At, you know, throughout the process, you could still be able to separate the two. But over time, uh, it, it gets to a place where there's no separation. There's no way to identifiably separate. Do you understand that I'm saying this to you because Christ Jesus was made a curse for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. So our identity now is found literally in him. So God doesn't see you as small. Why? Because you're in him who has been exalted above all things. You are in him. And so our union together, we can no longer be separated. So if you're going to experience these things that even Paul was talking about, you are going to have to, Pastor Marcia shared it today. Number one, you got to get dressed up. What does that mean? Acknowledge it. Philemon 1.6, that the sharing of your faith may become what? Effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. I like it in the Amplified. It says, and I pray, look at this, that the participation in and sharing of your faith may produce and promote, look at this, full recognition and appreciation. Ah, appreciation. So if you're not, if you genuinely don't have an appreciation of who you are in Christ, that's why I said you got to look at it. You got to go and actually look at who you are. Because until you begin to participate, how do you participate? You got to acknowledge these things. You've got to acknowledge there are things in me in Christ. I better find out what are these things that have been deposited in me in Christ Jesus. It's not enough to say, I am who he says I am. Well, who did he say you are? 
Do you know one thing that he says? Who you are in Christ? He says the uh, participation in and sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation. It's not always an indication, but, you know, if somebody's not praising God, it's because of not, they don't have an appreciation for it. So you can't just beat them over the head and make them. You know, don't get mad if you're in praise and worship and you're trying to lead them and, and people are standing around. You can't get mad at them. They don't have an appreciation. They probably don't have a recognition. They have not yet acknowledged. It's obvious. So he says, um, participation and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is, that is ours in our identification with Christ Jesus and unto his glory. So, for example, you know, we just read Philippians 3, 8 to 11. I just read that uh, with Paul saying, yes, everything is worthless. So what do I do? I'm giving you practical steps here. This is what I do. I take that scripture. I read it. Every day, daily, 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 read it. And then now I start, what do I have to say about it? What am I going to do about what he said? He says, so I say, my family, I, I say the Estrada family, I call my family. Our number one desire in our passion in life is to gain Christ. I say the same thing I just read. We, I consider, I said, we consider the accolades of this world to be garbage, compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus our Lord. Fame is not a goal. It is not my, it is not my end result. It is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, well done, good and faithful daughter. Well done, you did good. You finished. You ran your course. You did according to what I asked you and wanted you to do. I say, to experientially know him, his love, and the mighty power that raised him from the dead. So the things that you hear, the things that you acknowledge, everything, every time you acknowledge who you are in Christ, your identity, who you are, what you have, what you can do, those are three things you need to discover. Listen, I have a little booklet in there. It says, in him. I meant to pull it out, that blue one. So we have this, we, we give this out to everybody in our church. We get them for like... Uh, I don't know, just cents, less than a dollar each. These tiny little books, they're in him, and it's all the in him scriptures. So nobody can have an excuse of, well, I don't know where to find them. Great, we've got them in a book. Brother Kenneth E. Hagan. We get these, and we buy them in bulk, and we just continually give them out. We don't just give them out frivolous, frivolously. We give it out to people that just get, got saved, just got, or just people that have been saved for a while but don't know this. So if I'm having a conversation, I say, you need to know who you are. You need to know what you have. You need to know what you can do in Christ Jesus. I give them this. Start paying attention to this. And whatever sticks out to you, whatever gets you the excited, excited the most, highlight it. And then start writing it down and say the same thing. As Apostle was saying this morning, the word of God in your mouth is just as powerful as the word in his own mouth. The word of God is alive. It's a living word. It's works and it brings life. I'm just, I'm tired of seeing believers suffering in areas, especially when it comes to the soul. This whole mental illness is not like it's never been around. It's increasing in number. There's a reason for that. Not my assignment today. But here's what I know. God, God's word is living. It is powerful and it has the ability, the word alone. There are times and thank God for it where the anointing, the power of the anointing comes upon a man or woman of God and they lay hands on you and boom. Ooh, I love those times. They're exciting. It's like you see somebody change like that. And we've seen testimonies of people, man, they got saved and just all their bad habits cut cold turkey, just Bam, no more desire, D don't even go back. Substance abusers and all that stuff. And it's wonderful, it's great. But do you know that same miraculous workings and power and anointing is in the word of God? And particularly in the word concerning who we are, what we have and what we can do in Christ Jesus. And it's not like uh, Sister Francis said, it's not just about if you can quote it. 
You got to experience it. And it's going to take time. If you're going to experience it, you got to fellowship with it. You got to pull it out. Even when you don't feel like it, you got to pull it out and say it. Agree with it. Once you read it, now say, what am I going to say about this? God said what he said. Now, what am I going to say? Because I'm going to release some life in this. I'm going to speak over my life and say it. So every day you need to get dressed up. How? Acknowledge and confess. Biblical confession means the saying the same thing that God says. It's saying the exact thing that God says. Glory to God. So that's one example that I give. All right, number two, press daily. Philippians chapter three, go back to Philippians chapter three. In the Amplified, in the verse 10, it says, again, Paul is speaking. He says, for my determined purpose. <laughs> this is my determined purpose. You know, I get real nervous about seeing, and especially with, with people in the kingdom, but particularly, you know, these up and coming generations, and I'm not, this is not me pointing to them as, as, as the source of blame because we're raising the next generation. And we're, we're, we've come before them. But I'm saying, and it's not just the next generation, but I really get concerned. It's one of the reasons why, I, and I don't, you listen, I'm not judging anybody that likes this and does this, but I, I just, I get uncomfortable and I don't enjoy, it's not entertainment to me to watch uh, those, those uh, reality um, shows that, that um, they, the competition shows, like music and all this stuff, because it really breaks my heart. I start to, I want to weep. Because I'm hearing them interviewing these people that are, are trying out for these positions, you know, like, and, and to sing and to be a musician and all this stuff. And they want the fame. They want the glory. And these, these young people, this is, their, this is their aspiration. And you're seeing it even in the church. And, and YouTube sensations. And again, I, I think it's all cool and all, but it's like, it, it, that is their aspiration. They haven't seen the value of knowing Christ Jesus. They don't recognize and see, and many of us in, in these other generations, older generations, we haven't seen and experienced the value of, do you know he's the deliverer of our soul? Not just our spirit was made new, but he has, he's given us the tools that literally can transform and free us from the curse of the law that is, involves our souls, that affects our souls, where we now come into a place of depression. And we're coming into a place of, of, of you know, those places of um, low self-esteem and, and anxieties, my Lord. It's outrageous. It's found in his word. And it's by his spirit. His spirit will make it real to you. But we're not making room for it. We're not taking the time because our aspirations and our, and our determinations and our passion. I hear these young people being interviewed and not just young people, just some of those people on there. That's why I have a hard time watching. I'm like, oh, turn it off, turn it off. I can't. Oh, this is my life. This is what I, I long to do. And there's nothing wrong. I believe God anoints us and appoints us for every different aspect. I mean, so many of us, I thank God we're all different and we have giftings and abilities. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that God can't anoint and appoint someone even for the entertainment industry. But it's to be the light. And I, I, I sit there and I'm... Uh, this is, this is what I want to do, and, 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 and I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't make it, if I don't get accepted. This is all I've aspired to be. That's it. It's empty. He says, my determined purpose is that I may know him. Look at this, not just know up here, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. I know the remedy. I know the remedy that can free people from depression. And I can sit there and, and, and anxieties and any other mental illnesses as the like. The remedy 
the cure. It's there, it's here, it's available. And many of us have, uh, all of us have access to it. But you know what the sad part is? I'll sit there and try to spoon, spoon feed. We're pastors. So our job as a shepherd is to feed, guide, and lead, shepherd the flock. And you're trying to feed them. And you can't make them swallow. I'm preparing the meal. I'm trying to, and specifically, now I'm not, there are times where, you know those one-on-one -on -one times? I'm, I'm going to give you exactly what you need. Let me tell you, baby, let me get these ingredients for you. This is exactly for you. This is, this is a complete meal plan just for you. Baby, just eat it. Just eat it. Don't worry about how you feel. Don't, don't worry about, is it working as you're chewing? Just eat it. And the saddest part, and the, the part that grieves me the most is I see people, I've given them a meal. I've prepared for them. I've given them exactly what the Spirit of God even led me to give them. And they won't eat. It's easy to do. What am I saying? Eating, confessing, read, get it in your mind and get it in your consciousness. Do you know that there are, if you meditate on something, anything, it could be positive or negative, it creates pathways in your brain. Did you know that? Science discovered it. You know, they don't, I think it's the coolest discovery, but I just, I don't need science to prove that to me. I believe what God's word says. If we will renew our minds, he knows how he created us. He knows exactly the patterns and the ways in which will bring us to eternal life. But we're too lazy to do it or too distracted. We've allowed other things to capture our hearts and our affection to where there's no longer desire. Bishop Garraway said last year, and it was revelation, it was confirmation for me because I knew there was something along the lines of, uh, there's something with entertainment and there's something, well, one, because the Spirit of God said to me uh, two years ago at the beginning of the year, we were praying and fasting, and he said, beware of entertainment. I just heard those words in my heart and I wrote it down and I shared it with my husband and I shared it with my family, and I shared it with our, our church family, and I said, beware of entertainment. Now, what is that, Lord? I'm thinking just the distracting part of it, you know, like how it can easily just, you know, pull you away from your time with the Lord or whatever, and you can get caught up so easily, especially in this day and age and the reels and the video, you know, all these things, you can just easily scroll and then hours go by. But imagine like accumulated over time, that's a lot of time. So I'm just thinking along that line. That was one, that was like a linear viewpoint. But what the Lord and Bishop Garraway said last year, he said, entertainment. It wasn't even his whole point of his message. I honestly don't remember his message because I was stuck on that. He said, entertainment has like an invisible hook pulling you. And I realized when he, when he said that, I said, yes, because the Lord had shown me as we were continuing to meditate on that and pray about that and to beware. Beware means be watchful, pay attention, watch out. Don't get suckered in. And as I heard that and as I was meditating on it, the Lord said, yeah, it's a lot like um, junk food. It's a lot like junk food. Junk food is pleasurable. Tastes great, feels, makes you feel good, at least in your soul. <laughs> Smells good. <laughs> but why do we call it junk food? It has no nutritional value. The, the sole purpose of junk food is to make you feel good, right? <laughs> Pleasurable. Now it's got its side effects. The biggest problem with it is not so much, well... Yeah, it just depends. Because <laughs> these, I mean, in America, you know, I don't know about other countries, but we have all kinds of extra stuff on that. Like, so there's a chemicals and processed stuff. Anyway, we ain't going there. But it's not so much just that. It's the fact that if you eat junk food and you just live on junk food, you don't want anything else. You have no desire for anything else of nutritional value. Now you're seeing, right? Because God created us to have a specific 
amount of this and that that he provided in the earth and that we should have in our bodies in order for it to function. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest still applies to everything, everywhere. So there's certain things that we need in our bodies, minerals, vitamins, all those things, but it keeps us from that. Which means then you become what? Malnutrition. Badly, poorly nutritioned. And what happens when you are poorly nutritioned? You are in a weakened position. Something my husband always says, never make decisions in a weakened position. Talking about spiritually, come on now, your spiritual diet. Brother Hagen used to say this all the time. He says, you know, I, 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 it, it breaks my heart. It, hurt, it hurts my heart because he says the average believer will eat three hot meals a day, but only one cold spiritual snack a week. And he called it a snack. And that's pretty much what it is for a lot of people. At least in America. I don't know about these other nations, but. And it cannot be. How can you partake of life? How are you going to get the benefits of life if you're not partaking of life? How are you going to do that? You're going to have to participate. Get dressed up in it. Press, number two, press daily. He said, my determined purpose is that I might know him progressively, become more deeply and intimately uh, with him perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly come on then in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection which exerts um over believers and that i may so share with his sufferings to be continually transformed into what his likeness even to his death his likeness in the hope that if possible, I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while in the body. What is he saying? Even though I'm here in this earth, come on, Jesus said, there'll be trials, there'll be tribulations. In this world, you will have difficulties. There will be situations that come up against you. But even in the midst of that, he says, if I, can, if I can know him, come on, I will be lifted out from among the dead. It's already been made available. The reality is it's already been finished. The finished work, to, work of Jesus was completed on that cross. When he said it is finished, he did it with everything was finished. It was complete. It was made available, but you and I had to do some corresponding action. You and I had to take action. First, we had to believe that he is the son of God, that he died on the cross for our sins and took our sin upon him and made us to be righteous. We had to believe it in our heart. We had to what? Confess it with our. And now we're living according to the way. Number three, walk it out. Walk it out. In other words, pattern your life about it. You got to get serious about this, guys. Like I said, Jesus said, take heed how you hear. Why is he saying that? Take heed how you hear? What you mean? Don't just come and hear the word, but hear what the spirit of God is saying in that time, in that moment, and follow through and respond to it. What would you have me to do with what I just heard? What, how do I need to apply this? Be intentional. Don't let the fear of failure stop you from doing it. If you're going to really experience this life, Paul says, I press towards this. This is what I press towards. If we're going to, if you and I are going to experience this life, if we're going to actually experience deliverance the way he intended it to be in every form, in every fashion, in every way. Come on. It doesn't because you and I both know salvation. We, we, we become a new man in Christ Jesus. We are, all things are passed away. All things have become new. Glory to God. Come on. We're made righteous. We're righteous. We're holy. That changes the way how you approach everything in him. Praise God for it. But in that soulish realm, in our minds, in our will, in our emotions, some of us, we can church the, we can really church it. My husband was saying it yesterday in church. He's like, you know, church ain't really that fun unless you, (laughs) 
And only, I guess only a pastor's kid can say that in front of the room, but he's like, it's not, I don't love it that much to be like just going through the motions. It's not enough. If you're not going to do anything with it and you don't experience, this is what keeps us coming back. We experience the, the victory. We experience the freedom. Come on, when I was lost in my depression and thoughts and things of fear and all these things, what was the thing that saved me? Come on. I don't know about you, but that's what drives me when I experience this. He shares in his book, Fight of Your Life, um, about our testimony concerning, you know, um, had the, or I was pregnant and, you know, we were having our first child, Kizia, and all those things were happening. But honestly, I, this journey started long before I was pregnant. This journey of the enemy trying to bring fear into my life. So that I may side in with him and instead of with God. And if I did not give my attention, and I have a similar testimony to Pastor Marcia. I had to learn how to, uh, I had to get rooted and grounded in the love of God. It, Ephesians 3 says it runs deep. It's wide. It's far reaching. It is vast. It is the root. The root of your faith is the love of God. Faith won't work until you establish in the love of God. Your faith won't work right. Let me say that. So how are you going to do this? Um, num step four. Step four. I got to go quickly. Oh, before, let's just say this. I want to say this. Look carefully. I said to a pattern your life after it. Hold true. Uh, Philippians 3.16 says, only let us hold true to what we have already attained and walk and order our lives. That means that's something you and I have to do. We have to be intentional about it. Order our lives. Brethren, together, follow my example and observe those who live after the pattern we set for you. And then in uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and uh, verse 15, quickly, uh, an amplified classic, it says, look carefully then how you walk. What is he talking about? How you live. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. And in verse 17, therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless. Don't allow these thoughts, the cure to uh, depression, the cure to anxieties. You're going to have to get your thoughts and get your mind on what he says about you, who he says you're listening too much to every. You're listening to your experiences. You're letting your experiences tell you who you are. You, you are not who, what you have experienced. You are who your creator says that you are. It's not enough to be familiar with it and be able to even quote it. Get it out. Eat it daily. Get it in your mouth and speak it and proclaim it. Then you'll see. Forget about how you feel. Forget about if you, if you can't even believe it while you're saying it. Keep saying it. I'm telling you, it's working. And it will work. And you'll experience eternal life. You'll experience the resurrection from that place. If you keep eating... Because there's something that happens. There's patterns in your brain. And your brain begins to compute and it will start believing. And then guess what follows? Your emotions will agree. And you'll start to walk differently. You walk differently when you're confident. Not confident in who you are, but confident in who you are in him. You pray differently too. And you will use your authority and not let that devil... Have his way. You ain't coming up in my house and sealing what? No, you ain't. I'm drawing a bloodline right now. The blood of Jesus is against you. And you won't come in here. Come on, you don't let nobody come in your natural house and do that. Talking about whatever will be, will be. No, not so. Devil's a liar. Step four, last one, ask the Father for help. I thank God for the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Listen, without the Holy Spirit, we'd be, we'd be, Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. Why did he say that? I will not leave you as orphans. In the very next words, he said, I'm going to give you another helper. 
advocate, standby, strengthener. He will reveal the truth to you. How many of you know the truth makes you free? Only the truth makes you free. It's not just what you like to hear that's going to tickle your ears and make you feel like, ooh, that's deep. So what? It's deep. Is it going to work for you? Is it actually going to make you free? What are you going to do with that? Holy Ghost, reveal it to me. Come on, he makes it a reality where I experience the resurrection of Christ. Come on, when I was dead in my trespasses, he, he delivered me. When I was in fear, man, when I was going through those things, my mind was bombarded with thoughts, overflowing, overwhelming, felt like I couldn't control it. But that was the, the deception. I had to speak up. I can't outthink it. Don't outthink it. Pull out. And this is where the Lord really delivered me. I got a revelation of him as my father. Come on, I grew up in church. I was a preacher's kid. I knew he was my father. But I'm talking about revelation. I am in him. There's no way. Because for me, it was a fear of, of dying. Fear of death. And when I got that revelation, if the devil could have took me out, he would have took me out a long time ago. If he could pluck me from my father's hand, now I don't care about, and see, this is what, this is, this is what used to get me. The enemy come in with all those other, but what about the so-and-so? And what about this one? And what about that? I don't know about them. I just know about me. This is my reality. I am in him. He is my shelter. And I will have what he says. I'm going to get it in me and I'm going to come into agreement and alignment. So Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 3, I would recommend it in the Amplified Classic. These are prayers that the Spirit of God led Paul to pray. Starting in verse 17 in Ephesians chapter 1. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm telling you this. He says... Lord, I'm asking, now he was praying for the church at Ephesus, but it's a good prayer to pray over yourself. Pray it over your family, pray it over everybody. Why? You're asking God, help me, because I can't get this by myself. You won't get revelation in your head. The natural man can receive nothing from the Lord. That's not just a heathen. If you're being in the natural, you can't receive spiritual things. So it's the Holy Ghost that makes it a reality. He says that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Why? So that the eyes of my understanding will be flooded with light so that I can know and understand the hope to which you have called me. How rich is your glorious inheritance? Whoa, we got an inheritance, y'all, and it's a lot. And that power that was at work in Christ when you raised him from the dead, that I may see that power in me. Come on, it's not enough to just know it. You got to see it and experience that power in you. Tap into it. How are you going to do it? Ask the Holy Ghost. Ask the Father to give you that spirit of revelation. So we need a spirit of revelation. Come on. And a spirit of wisdom. Come on, say, I need a spirit of wisdom. And I need a spirit of revelation. That's only by the Holy Ghost. So never be ashamed of him. Chapter 3. He says, and this is what was a big difference for me, game changer. For this reason, verse uh, 14, <sighs> seeing the greatness of his plan by which you are built together in Christ, I bow my knees before the Father our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom the home fam whole family in heaven and earth is named, the Father from whom all fatherhood takes his title and derives his name, may he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory. So I say this, Lord, that you would grant me, and I pray it over my children, I pray it over our spiritual children, I pray it over our church. Lord, grant unto us, give us this rich treasury. Come on, out of your glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power by your spirit in our inner man. Your innermost being and personality. May Christ, through our faith, actually dwell, settle down, make his permanent home in our hearts. May we be rooted deep in love and founded securely. Ooh. Founded securely on love that we may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp. We're not going to get it by ourselves. We have to have the power to apprehend and grasp the experience of that love. You see that in Amplified? The experience of that love. What is the breadth and length and depth and height? Ooh, 
that we may really come to know. Come on, say that I may really come to know. Practically, through experience of, of ourselves, the love of Christ. This, my friend, is the way to victory. This, my friend, is the way to experience everything that he made available to us in Christ Jesus. Acknowledge it. Walk in it. Press towards it. Make it reg Be intentional about it. And then ask him for help. Amen? God bless you.